Hello and welcome to the Geeks Table, it's Alex here and today with me is the Mac Mini on Apple Silicon. I have the very basic version, just got a little bit bigger SSD because Android SDK can occupy quite a lot of storage. So let's see how well it stands against two Intel beasts, the 15 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And also against two brothers, the MacBook Pro on M1 and MacBook Air on M1. We shall test the Android Studio, Android SDK and Android NDK and also the alpha version of the Android emulator. But first, why Mac Mini though? I prefer notebooks in general and that's the reason why I haven't reviewed the Mac Mini when it was originally introduced, but this machine has quite a few things that might convince me, and maybe you, to buy it instead of a MacBook. First is the price of course and if you're a startup or a student or on a low budget, you might go for the cheapest option available, and that could save you a couple of bucks. Second, it has all necessary ports that you might need in your development. For example, I have an old Motorola test device and a micro USB cable that has a USB-A on the other side, so I don't need to buy a dongle to attach the phone to the computer. Also, I can attach one display via HDMI and another one via Thunderbolt. And since the power goes via the dedicated port, the Thunderbolt ports remain unoccupied. Now let's check how good is the Android Studio. So for this I will check the continuous cache invalidation and indexing. So I will open my project, which is quite big, and I will invalidate the caches and restart the Android Studio for 10 times in a row. And this is what I've got. Mac Mini performed stable and it was almost the same as the MacBook Pro 13 on Apple Silicon which makes sense since both of them have the same CPU and an active cooling system. However, both stayed silent during the test. On the contrary, MacBook Pro 16-inch, alongside with the 15-inch brother, kept their fans on the maximum. It was noisy, but it helped them to finish the process twice faster. Next, I did some simple changes in the code and then rebuilt the application, then made some other changes in the code and rebuilt it again. So I was trying to simulate like the normal workflow and I did it for 10 times and this is what I've got. All M1 devices were close to each other, though for the record, Mac mini was the fastest one among them. Intel family did it much faster and with no fans turned on. And that's an expected result because Android Studio still works on M1 via emulation. Okay, after being done with the code, I decided to do some changes in the layout and in the resources, and then I rebuilt the app for 10 times again. Here, Mac Mini was just a tiny bit slower than the other M1 chip owners. Well, if two seconds is a big deal for you, of course. The Intel gang did it faster and with no fans turned on, so they're still leading here. And I must say that if you have an Intel machine already, which is that powerful, you may keep it for a year for sure and then upgrade to the next generation of Apple Silicon. By that time, Android Studio will be working natively, so you may see a bigger leap in the performance. But if you have an Intel MacBook Air or the entry-level MacBook Pro 13, then an upgrade makes sense for you. All right, before we look at the NDK, let me show you the Android emulator that works on M1. Right now, it's just an alpha version, so don't expect much, but still, it's a good start. In order to install it, you should go to the GitHub page, to the release section. I'll post the link in the description. Then look for the DMG file and download it. Now let's start it. And once it's booted, you'll see a virtual device in your configurations. The emulator works smooth and much faster than on Intel machines, and also it has just received the Google services support, so if your app relies on those, you can test it on the emulator from now on. Also the web view is finally there, but without Chrome support for now. Now let's check the NDK. So I've used the FFmpeg library of my friends to test the completion time. You may use the instruction in the description to get your own result and then compare it with mine. So I compiled it continuously for 10 times in a row and here's what I've got. Mac Mini did it the same time as the MacBook Pro on the same chip, but MacBook Pro turned on the fans during the process where Mac Mini didn't. And the Intel MacBooks were a few seconds behind the M1 family and their fans were working like crazy. So if you're choosing between Mac Mini or the MacBooks on M1, 
there is no noticeable difference in the performance. So if you need a balanced portable device, go with the MacBook Air. If you need an active cooling, the brighter display and the touch bar, go with the MacBook Pro. Or if you need an engine for the display, mouse and keyboard that you already have, go with the Mac Mini. But no matter what device you're going to buy, please consider the 16 gigabytes of RAM option. Because on all of my devices, I kept receiving out of memory errors here and there. But anyways, by no means I'm trying to convince you to buy a Mac. This channel is my hobby, not a business project, so it's always you to make the final decision. And now I'm interested in your thoughts, so feel free to leave a comment and hit a like if you enjoyed my tests. It's been Alex, and see you at the Geek's Table. We have a lot of upcoming things to discuss.